recording there, and then I'll just sure. be a minute or so while I'm looking for something to talk about. All right. All right. Okay. Three, two, one. Oh, one more question would be, I, I noticed on Fiverr you listed that you played both, like, tank and support. Do you kind of, like, evenly split those, or do you, like, do, like, 90% of one of them and just a little bit of the other? How would you say the spread is between those? I'd say probably 90% healer. Uh, I've not really placed in tank yet, so I okay. mean, two healers. All right, just, just checking. Yeah, sure. <laughs> All right. Right yeah. Yep, and then I, I don't know if I said that already, but I'll just be a minute or so I'm look while sure. I'm looking for something to talk about. Yeah. All right. So maybe noticing one thing. Yeah. Okay. So we're already noticing one thing. We'll we'll go mm -hmm. over that now. So overhealing. So what is overhealing? Why don't you want to do it? Overhealing is basically anytime you are continuing to heal when somebody is already full HP. This is essentially just wasted time. It's time where you're doing absolutely nothing because if somebody's full HP, then they don't need healing and therefore healing doesn't do anything, right? So um, very simple solution, right? That what you do is once somebody gets the full HP or you swap to somebody who's already full HP, you should immediately swap over to damage boost and then look around for something else to do, right? Somebody else to heal, right? So for example, here, while we're healing Lucio, right, who is full HP, our immediate reaction should be to swap to damage boost. That way, damage boost actually does something here. Healing would not, because he's full. And then we'd look right. around and then maybe heal like Zarya or Reinhardt, right? So right. that is should be the reaction. Um, but like so far, we've seen a little bit of overhealing so far. Um, mm -hmm. This is typically a habit that when whenever people have it, it continues to be a, a repeat thing and they don't really notice it. Like I've had people where um, they've had up to like 14 seconds a fight where they're just doing absolutely nothing because they're healing people are full HP, right? So it does become a very big problem if it's consistently happening for long periods of time. Here, we can just kind of count out how many times it happens real quick at the very beginning here, right? So we just already see, oh, we get the Shonkrat, right? Then we... He, he's full HP, right? So that's one second. We swap over to damage boost. Right? Two seconds. And maybe like still two, three, four seconds, five. Right? We swap over to Ryan. Six, seven. Okay. Swapping over. Right? So now people are actually starting to take damage, so healing's needed a little bit more now, right? But so that's I like we swapped over damage juice there. Okay, like maybe like we, we just swap between the two. So like eight seconds. It's like already just like eight seconds. So you can see just like if that continues on for every single fight of a, a whole game, that's just you know, and this isn't even the end of the fight here. That just consistently becomes a big problem. So let's just finish out the fight and just count out count out how long it was during the fight. Okay, so nine seconds on the Ryan there. Ten seconds, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Right, so that was, you know, one fight there. My fight just ended. Um, so like 13 seconds in a fight, right? If that's, again, if that's consistent, um, what, that one fight took about a minute. Right, so mm -hmm. if we have, let's say this whole game is gonna take us 14 minutes, right? That's what 14. We said 13 seconds, right? 13 yeah. times 14 equals, and then we divide that by 60. Means we would basically be spending around three minutes doing absolutely nothing, right? right. So it's just time that really adds up. So just keep mm -hmm. your eye on it. Get into good habits of sw swapping to damage boost and just not healing, and then that's something that applies to almost all healers um, in the game. Most healers out there, maybe like the exception being like Lucio, who just has the aura, right? <laughs> um, but besides that, just pay attention to it. And then, yeah, that's about it for that moment. So let's just wait for next fight. Will. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oh, 
Okay. Make sure you're paying attention to our critical HP Reinar here, because we're not really healing him too much. Even right now, you know, it's he was critical for a very long time, and like, look how long it takes us to react to the fact that he's critical, right? So he now he's critical, right? We see him; he's going in. We're staring straight at him. He's low health, right? And we have only we only have a Lucio, right? So we mm -hmm. want to be able to heal a Reinar when he's critical, so we can keep him alive. Right? And then it takes us one, two, three, four. Five, six Mississippi, right before we finally get on top of them, right, and heal them up. Yeah. Right. So we want to make sure that we're that that I would say is largely an awareness thing. Let me see one other thing. Do we try to beam Ryan? I think we try to beam Ryan there. Um, but it, maybe it's just a little bit out of range. Um, one other question I maybe ask is, yeah. um, are have you adjusted your beam sensitivity as of yet? Uh, beam sensitivity. I don't think I have. All right. So, um, I would assume then you're not familiar with what that is. I do not know. All right. That's that's completely fine. Most people don't. So, if you go to controls, then to mm -hmm. all heroes, then you scroll to mercy, wherever mercy is a pastor, right? Then you will see the option for beam sensitivity and guardian angel sensitivity. So, what oh, these, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. what those two do is if they are at 10%, which is the lowest it can go, um, mm -hmm. it would mean that you'd have to stare literally directly on top of somebody for the beam to register, right? Which is, isn't something you want, but at 100%, it's going to be very lenient. It's just going to kind of go to whoever is closest to you, maybe not who you're actually looking at. So mm -hmm. lowering that might actually allow you to more specifically pick out people like in a crowd um, and not have it to go to some random person, which is a big problem, especially for beam um guardian angel sensitivity does not matter as much because usually if you're flying somewhere you're going to the same place either way if, if it's a group of people right so i would say typically i'd probably say beam sensitivity you're depending on your confidence level with your aim you could probably put somewhere between like 50 and 80 um and then just like if you wanted a little bit more specific you can put lower um, guardian angel sensitivity probably be more like uh, I don't know, like maybe sixty to uh, let's just like seventy to ninety, something like that, right? So you just mm -hmm. lower it a little bit on that one. All I right. think right now I have both guardian angel and beam sensitivity at a hundred. Mm -hmm. Yep. So just lowering those would probably be helpful just for more accuracy with it. Um, mm -hmm. Besides that, the big issue here is our awareness of just pay attention to our environments because when we see Reinhardt is critical and we want to pay attention to critical targets on our team, um, mm -hmm. then we know to heal Reinhardt, right? Um, we can go more in depth in the future on that if it comes up more often or if we need to. But for the moment, we'll just keep going. Okay, so we do have Valk for this next fight. Let's see what we do with it. I also have trouble holding alts. Like, I hold them way mm. too long. I don't know when to, when to activate them. Yep, alright, so then... I mean, we can honestly just go over that now, even before All we right. get into it. But sure, let's sure. talk about when do you use ultimates. You use your ultimate. Now, th there's certain ultimates in the game that do not apply to this, but I'd probably say the vast majority of ultimates in the game have the same application. Mm. Is you use your ultimate basically um, right after the fight has begun. Is, right. is when you use your ultimate, right? You don't want to use it way before the fight begins because if you use it before the fight begins, then it, you're not really going to be able to get as much value as it uh, out of it, right? You're, you're, the teams aren't going to be close enough together. You're not, your damage boost isn't going to really do as much. Team's not going to need healing, right? And the enemy team's going to have all the resources, right? So it's just a little too early if you go before the fight begins. If you go late fight or after fight, right? Let's just say late fight. Um, mm -hmm. Usually not going to be very good because if you go late fight, then that means by the ults that are generally ults that are used first get more value than ults that are used yeah. second, right? So mm -hmm. if we use our ultimate after them, then by that point we could have already lost the fight. Um, and then in that case, our ult doesn't do anything or we're forced to hold on to it. Um, right. Or if we, it could just end up doing less because let's say we're down a bunch of people because they use their ults first. Well, now we have less people to heal, less people to damage boost, right? So therefore, Valk does less. Um, and then on top of that, don't hold on. I, I think you already got the general concept, but you know, make sure we're not yeah. holding on to our ultimates because when you mm -hmm. do, it doesn't do anything, right? It's zero value. And in the time that, you know, if we hold on to it for three fights, we could have used three ultimates in that time, right? So it's three mm -hmm. versus zero, which is a very big difference. But, right. So 
looking to use it more often is very important. So the fight be like, do you want to know how to, uh, how to identify when the fight's beginning? Generally, the biggest indication of a fight beginning is how close are the teams to each other, right? Mm -hmm. If the teams are basically, or the main tanks or whatever, are like are on top of each other, then the fight's basically begun. It's very easy, like when it's just two Reinhardts. Like if the Reinhardts are touching and they're swinging on each other, fight's started basically, right? It's not, that's not, in end all be all, but it is, and it's going to be very situational. But that's a good indication. Um, other indicators could be like, um, are kills already happening? Um, are all uh, like, is, are other people using ultimates? Right? Uh, how many? Like, you know, what what's happening in the fight? There's there's other indications that go into that, but those are general ones, right? Um, mm -hmm. For you to pay attention to. So, wanting to make sure we're not holding on to ultimates is definitely important. Okay. One thing I'd be looking at, like right now is I might consider Valking and going to res the Junkrat, right? Mm -hmm. This is the type of thing that lower-ranked players don't really think of too often, but, like, when you Valk, you can have insane mobility, and you can go for much riskier reses you would not be able to otherwise do, right? So here, for example, if we were to Valk, we can just, you know, fly right up in the sky here and then just zoom in and, like, you know, who's going to stop us, right, if we try to res from here, right? So that's a free res right there. That gets junk wrapped back in the fight. Means the fight's the winnable. R the fight is basically beginning, like, right now. A pick has happened. They're ulting. Tanks are on top of each other. This is roughly the time where we should be valking if you waited an extra five seconds wouldn't really make a big difference right this is just around the time in which we should start ulting all right now let's also mm, let's see um now you also mentioned on fiverr that you play um mercy anna and baptiste what would you say the spread is between mercy anna and baptiste is it like mostly mercy or do you play a lot of anna and baptiste uh, i can like view specific hours i think this competitive season i think i played the most uh baptiste like i have three hours on mm -hmm. him this season then mercy is one hour then anna's 43 minutes okay so Firstly, I might note that that's uh, like a little amount of time. So like, just yeah. note for Im improvement purposes, the more time you put in is yeah. definitely going to equate to more improvement, yeah. right? You can't really practice and get better if you don't practice and get better. Mm -hmm. um, then second thing I would note is um, it does seem as though like, so if you're not like a Mercy one trick and you're kind of a little bit more flexible between them, um, it's important to know when each character is good and in, in which situations. Um, mm. Mercy Lucio is not a good good character comp um, the combo, and Mercy's yeah. also not good with Reinhardt Zarya, um, in a lot of cases, right? Mm -hmm. or, uh, it, it really depends, right? But I'd mainly say Mercy Lucio is just not a high enough healing yeah. output, right? So I might recommend being on either Bot or Ana here, um, mm -hmm. over Mercy. Now Mercy is pretty decent with an Ash and with a Junkrat. Those are fine, but like if you're responsible for doing the main healing to Reinhardt Zarya, you don't really have a, enough burst healing to be able to do that, right? Mm -hmm. So Ana and Baptiste would be much better at that. Typically, um, you don't want to have like in, in general, it's not an again, it's situational and and I'll be all, but in general, you don't want to have either two off supports or flex supports and two. Um, main supports. Are you familiar with what characters comprise those two categories? I see maybe like healers that do like the most healing are considered main ones. Um, no, not per not necessarily. So main oh. main support and flex support um come from the the fact that you have two support players, right? So mm -hmm. you so if you're talking about a team environment, so like over think Overwatch League, right? Yeah. You have two supports you're gonna be playing, right? And the main support is the character that is being run most of the time. Now oh. I'm not I'm not sure that that was actually when the term was like originated, though mm -hmm. that might not actually apply to this current moment, but that's how it originated. And back in the day Lucio was played all the time in mm -hmm. like every single game so lucio is kind of like one of the core foundational main support characters and then therefore that person who plays all those other characters right it's you're, you're when you're saying main support it's what does the main support player play as well right so the okay. lucio player would also play mercy and the lucio player would also play Brig and the Lucio player would maybe sometimes play Baptiste, right? So it's what characters does the main support 
player play, not in the, and then therefore that comprises the main support um, kind of role, right? And then the flex support would be all the other characters. So oh. characters that comprise these two roles, right? So you have, uh, on, in flex support, you have Ana, most of the time Baptiste, M Moira, most of the time, um, Brig, sometimes, not a lot, Zenyatta, most of the time, Right, and then those are those are the main flex support characters, unless I'm forgetting one. Um, then main support is Mercy most of the time, Lucio most of the time, um, Brig most of the time, Baptiste sometimes. You know, maybe something. You know, it's situational where you'd swap off, mm -hmm. but those those are mainly how you'd differ between the two of them. So it typically is not good to have two off or main healers. So here you have two main healers, right? Yeah. Um, which means here we just have very, very little healing. And we're on a composition that needs a lot of healing. So that's a big problem. Brig Lucio would be the same thing. Zen Lucio would be the same thing, right? Not really good comps. Mercy Brig, Mercy Zen. All of them don't really do a, ton, a bunch of healing. Not a good comp to be running, uh, especially in this scenario, right? So better would be Ana Lucio or Bat Lucio or Moira Lucio would be much better um, combos just because it's, think like high healing output high utility right is right. kind of what you want to be aiming for um and then if you have two high healing high healing output characters again it's it kind of doesn't really do very much so like if you have bat think like you have baptiste and anna or anna and moira it in a lot of situations isn't going to do a ton because you have high healing and then a lack of utility, right? Because you don't have that speed boost or you don't have that um, Discord orb or whatever, right? So right. Th that's just that. My recommend being on, on that. We've already spent a ton of time on it. So let's continue here. Mm -hmm. um, issue here is that we back up like really far away for no reason. So notice how our team is like getting really aggressive and we're backing away, right? Mm -hmm. Um not the play. So let's talk about awareness, right? Because it definitely awareness seems to be a repeat thing. Mm -hmm. um, awareness is paying attention to your environment, right? Well, you might be saying, well, Boogie, um, that that seems a little bit confusing. How do, how do you get better at paying attention? That doesn't, that seems like a weird concept or a vague concept to get better at looking around you, right? right. Well, you get better at awareness the exact same way that you get better at anything that you're trying to get better at in game or out of game right and that mm -hmm. is while you are playing you're going to focus on your gameplay it means that you're not going to autopilot you're not just going to play to play and contrary to popular belief you're not going to just purely play to win as when you do that you just end up stagnating where you don't really go anywhere instead mm -hmm. you're going to play to improve where you end up actually winning more because you're actually getting better now um, what that looks like within your gameplay is while you're playing, you're going to be thinking in your head, awareness, 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 right? And giving yourself a constant reminder to pay attention to your environment and look around and be aware. And when you do that, well, now you look around more, right? It's, you know, that, that simple. When you think about looking around, you look around. This gives you better awareness. When you have better awareness for a longer period of time, that forms it as a positive habit. Once it forms as a habit, you no longer need to think about it as much because it just kind of comes naturally once it forms as a habit. And then you can move on to something else and work on something else. Um, we're going to talk about a ton of things here, so I would recommend don't try to focus on everything all at once. That mm -hmm. will get confusing and complicated and overwhelming. Focus on one category of things or one to three smaller things within a category. You can also focus on things um, if they're completely unrelated. So think, for example, a good example is ultimate usage. You're only going to be using your ultimate like for, on average, like 10 seconds every like two minutes, right? So you're not using it all the time, whereas your ability usage, you will be, or I guess on Mercy, actually not, your ability usage wouldn't be as all the time either. Let's say your awareness is going to be an all the time thing right? Mm -hmm. And your positioning is going to be an all the time thing. So your positioning and awareness, if you try to work on both of those things at the same time, they would overlap and you would just be getting overwhelmed. Whereas if you worked on your awareness and your ultimate usage, those wouldn't really overlap as much and that would work fine, right? That all makes sense? Mm -hmm. All right. So pay attention. Here we are 
getting out when our team is going in, go in when your team is going in, be aggressive with them. Probably wanted to be ulting here, but we're holding on to it. Right? And we're just not really participating when we could be participating. And then basically because of our lack, uh, our, our impact on losing the fight there is not that we died. It's not that we made a big mistake. It's because we had a lack of impact because we didn't do anything to win the fight is why we lost the fight. Mm -hmm. All right, um, one other concept to mention is the concept of target priority. Um, or, sorry, not, that's not the, that's not the tar top meant thing I meant to say. I meant to say pocket targets. Um, are you familiar with the term pocket targets? Yeah, like focusing your healing and support on one specific character. Yep, b pretty much, right? More specifically, yeah. I'd say it's, it's understanding the right characters to specifically pocket during a game and give your attention to for the majority of the game and understanding mm -hmm. which of those. I would say it's better, in most situ situations, it's better understood as a default target. So mm -hmm. what that means is that there's certain characters in the game who are better to default to to be on most of the time, right? So think, for example, um, Mercy is not very high healing in in burst healing she doesn't have a very high healing output it's very consistent slow healing that's easy to land right and she also has a damage boost so you want to damage boost people who um are not and you want to so basically you want to be on people who are not going to be taking a ton of damage but a decent amount of damage and who also output a ton of healing in most cases that's going to be your dps because out, they output the most damage so your damage boost is going to get the most value out of being on them right you damage boost the most damage when you're damaging the damage right um all very redundant and, and you also aren't really going to be able to keep up with tanks in the same way that an ana baptiste or moira would be able to with your healing output right so right. in any case dps in most cases are going to be what we want to be pocketing um now like i said that means no, I wouldn't think of it as pocketing. I think of it as your default target. So when there's absolutely nothing else to do, we default back to that target. They're who we just go back to when we're, there's nothing to do. Now, if somebody needs healing, right? Like, let's say your Reinhardt's in the fight and he's critical or he's low health, right? Or he's in danger, right? And Reinhardt needs you, you go and heal Reinhardt. But if Reinhardt's full HP, then you can go back to your Ash, right? Um, mm -hmm. If you need to res, go ahead and res, but then you come back to your Ash when you're done. Now, you want to be identifying at the beginning of game is, like, who's the best target to be pocketing? Like, right now, like, in your team composition, if you'd look top left, who, yeah. maybe what would you say, like, pick, like, usually I'd say is, like, a good idea to have, like, maybe two or three um, picked out, right, of, like, this is my target priority order, just in mm -hmm. case the number one is dead, or you can't reach them, or sometimes number two overtakes number one in certain situations, like if they're ulting, right? So what would you say the order would be in this case? Like, in this current moment? In the in the composition, this game. Okay, okay. okay. I'd say... Probably a tie between Junk and Ash for first. I'm thinking either one of the two tanks as well. I'm thinking since Zarya can bubble Ryan. I think first would be Ash, second would be Junk, and then third would be Zarya. Yeah, so I think you pretty much nailed that. Ash is going to be the best because she gets the most value out of the damage boost um, being on her as it really heavily affects the dynamite usage and gets her like it gives her a lot of kills. Um, she's just a good combo pair with Ash. Um, so like if you were to have a scale, like 100% is like a fantastic combo and 0% mm -hmm. is like never ever be on this person. Um, right. I'd say Ash is like on the upside. She's like maybe like a, mm, I don't know, like a 70%, right? Just throwing a number mm -hmm. on there. Um, Junkrat, I'd say he's like a little bit less. I'd say maybe he's like a 55% on the scale. Like he's, he's pretty decent. A lot of um, damage, but burst damage. Instead yeah. Of 
Yeah, it's, it's very, uh, it, like you said, it's very inconsistent. Like, he just, and yeah. he'll end up missing a lot of his shots. And so it's just, he's not usually going to be a fantastic target to be on, but he can be a good target to be on. Maybe I'd I'll bump it up to 60, right? Mm-hmm. Something like that. Zarya, um, specifically when she's high energy, is going to be good. When she is a high energy target, she'd probably be bumped up to, like, if she's max energy, she'd probably be, like, the 70% of Ash, right? When she's mm-hmm. zero energy, well, now she's at, like, the... 10% range, right? Where you just shouldn't right. really be damaged to a singer very much, right? So, so far within our gameplay, I haven't really noticed that we haven't, this is the first time we've been on Ash, right? The whole game, and we kind of been on our tanks and Lucio a bunch, and not really on good pocket targets mm-hmm. in in these situations, right? So, we're looking to be on better targets. Don't stop now. Damage increase. Dein Schutzengel is down. Mm-hmm. Um. Hmm. Might have to go over something at some point here. <laughs> All right. So. In both of these situations, we did what you call staggering. Right? Are you familiar with that term? You've been playing for I a little heard. while, so maybe you are. Yeah, I heard. Yeah, so just to define it real quick, just to make sure we have that definition on the mm-hmm. table, staggering is basically just dying late, right? And what that when you die late, it means that your team is going to walk out in front of you and they have a decision. Either they can wait for you in which case you've just wasted a bunch of time right. or they can walk in without you and then just end up being at a big disadvantage for the next fight, right? right? So in both of these cases, we ended up staggering ourselves where we died late and then because we died late, then our teammates died, went in without us, they chose to go in and then because they went in without us, they ended up dying and that's what you call your stagger train where we staggered, then they staggered, and then we stagger again, and then they stagger again, right? So it just keeps on going, and then it's a train where it just never stops, right? So that's really bad for our team because we never group up. We never get a full six on six. It's always just a six on two or a six on four, right? You never get a full fight in, right? And that starts with us, and we did it, and we staggered twice here. So what can we do to stop staggering? So when you see that a fight is lost, you have two decisions, mainly, Decision one is ident- uh, is identify, can I get out? If you can, go for it, right? If you do not think that you can realistically get out, let them kill you mm-hmm. as fast as possible. This way, you don't end up staggering yourself, right? If you die sooner rather than later, that means that you respawn along with your team, right? Instead of really behind them. Um, there in that last situation, the fight was lost, and we just sat in there for a really long time. Make sure you're not hesitating with your decision. Make it fast. If we wait for 10 seconds and then try to get out and then die, well, now that's made the staggering even worse, right? right. So by the time we die, our, our team is already back in the fight, right? Um, so we staggered first, then our team staggered, right? Reinhardt and Arzaria died and they, they ended up going in without us, right? And they stagger. Now we are back in here and just notice how, like, probably say in this situation, the big thing is that, like, we see that this is very much like a lost fight or not, it's very much a very big problem. There's a big disadvantage. We just lost Mm -hmm. both of our tanks, right? We see things are not going our way and we just back up too slowly here, Right. We try to pocket Zarya out when we know that she's like 90% dead, right? And then we just kind of slowly back up and then notice how we walk back in here, right? Um, And then, right, when we probably should be backing up and just getting around the corner, waiting it out, right? Um, Another option here. Um, Another option here is giving it a couple seconds and then going for the rest of Zarya. Right. Um, we, we might discuss like how you can get off resist more in a moment here. Right. So let's say, okay. So right now, so when it comes to getting off reses, right, you have a bunch of different factors that come into play. Right. So uh, for, first off mistake here, we died. Um, let's exit out here. Go, go back to the training range here. So 
when you go for a res, there's a lot of factors that go into can I go for a res? And you want to be thinking through these factors of can I do it, right? First off, again, kind of the same thing with our ultimate is if we never use res, it's not going to do nothing. It's just wasted value or not wasted value, but it's just a lack of value. We don't do anything and we miss out on our potential to carry the game. Res is one of the highest value parts of our kit and we just don't use it, right? Like it. Our ultimate and our res are really high value abilities and ultimates. And if we never use them, they don't do anything at all, right? Um, right. So for a res, do it much more often. Look to go for it because then you actually do things. Now, don't suicide to do it, but be smart about it. Um, when you go for it, you have a lot of different factors. Like I've said a billion times already, um, those factors include, do I have cover, right? If I'm trying to res somebody right here, probably going to die. Now, if I'm trying to res somebody right here, well, now they can't see me. If they can't see me, they can't shoot at me. If they can't shoot at me, I can get all away with the rest, right? Um, mm -hmm. Additional things would be like, are they looking at me? If I'm resing right here and everybody's looking in that direction, I might be able to get away with the res because nobody's paying attention, right? Um, so not even just are they looking at me, but also are they paying attention? Maybe if we do this like when they're looking that direction, but they're not shooting at anybody, they're just looking there, they might be able to react to us fast enough. But if they're in the middle of shooting at our team, well, then maybe they might be too distracted, right? So are they looking at us? Are they distracted? Do I have cover? Do I have Valk? When you have Valk, you have insanely high mobility. You have the ability to go up and down and fly and get to high grounds. You have... a um, self healing right when you when you're valking you're going to be healing yourself which gives you again additional survivability so you can swoop in really really fast with a valk right so we saw cases for example where like we had teammates die behind enemy lines right we had a teammate die like all the way back here or i guess like you know let's just say teammates dying right there and the whole team's right here well if we valk then we can just swoop in like insanely fast and go for the res right and by the time they look back at us we already got the res off right um right. so look for aggressive reses with valk you can do it um then let's see what else was there other things um situational awareness yeah um situational awareness like were you asking me to go into that or what um uh, i think you already covered that just now yeah Before. so I i'm just trying to think if there's like anything else that goes into get getting off reses those are the main things um also note that you can drag it around corners right, right. so you you know, that's another thing to keep in mind. As long as you're Do... in range to activate it, then you can yeah. go anywhere and it still mm. work. Yep. Oh, one other thing I was going to mention is do you have team support? Because you can also res, like, if your teammates light you, right? Like, do you have mm -hmm. a shield? Do you have bubble? DM, right? Tang's just body blocking for you, right? And having your whole team stand in front of you, right? That's another thing to consider. So far, we haven't res. So far, we haven't valked. That's a humongous missed value, right? Mm -hmm. Between the two of those. Traveling to Morskaya, ready for battle. That's not us. No. Alright, so I think I think we just lost the fight after yeah, we yeah, died we, there, we, right? Yeah, we, we didn't last long after that. After the first one was kept. I'm here. All right, so this now we have an, an Ana, so running the Mercy is definitely much better than it was last round. Definitely mm -hmm. much more applicable here. Right, so... Well, good awareness of the Genji. Okay, positioning wise, make sure you are positioning yourself in the middle of as many teammates as possible, right? So th think, for example, right, if we are standing all the way over here, we, we kind of cap out at this distance, right? This is as far as we go. We're only able to heal Genji and that is it, right? Genji is the, as of this moment, Genji is the only person we can heal. Whereas if we, for example, are standing right here and we pop a heal on him, well, now we can heal every single person on our, on our team. So there's a very big difference between those positionings, right? Just that 10 meters of positioning because here, there where we're at, one person, now five people, right? Big massive difference because mm -hmm. let's say, you know, if, you know, let's say a Junkrat pellet hits Hanzo, there you're going to have maybe half a second to a second to heal him before he dies, right? right. Because he just gets tickled by anything else and he's done. If we're all the way over here, it's going to take us two seconds to reach him, right? So we need that really fast split second reaction time, and we're not going to be able to do that when we're really far away. So position yourself in the middle of as many people as possible. Get close to them. Here we're too far. Here we're too far. Here we're still too far. This is this is a little bit better. Still maybe outside of range of Reinhardt. Pay attention to Reinhardt. We just saw that he's critical, and we're not looking at him. 
right? So paying attention to health bars and danger levels of teammates because here, you know, Reinhardt need, really needs us and we're not really paying attention to him. All right, now we go over, but it's just a little bit late, you know? Completely fine for you to be on him right now. Right, he's taking a lot of damage. Now that he's full, probably be looking around a little bit more, paying attention to, you know, next person to go on. We also don't need to be this close to the fight. Put a little bit of a distance, right? Like, we were talking about put yourself in the middle of your team, but you right. don't have to put yourself on top of them. You still have 15 meters on your range, right? So from here, notice how our visibility is very limited, right? We can only right. see one person on our team and barely even see them. We're mm -hmm. putting ourselves unnecessarily, and we're, we're taking, like, damage oh. from, from them too, right? And getting pulled and whatnot, right? So from that angle, we can't really see stuff, whereas if we were to, like, back up, well, now we can see, you know, maybe, you know, two more, see the, the Hanzo, see the Ana, see the Ryan, right? Be out of danger a little bit more, so make sure we're not going too far in, be a little bit behind your team. Again, note that we're on the tanks rather than, in this situation, I'd probably say Hanzo would be number one. Um, Genji's not really a fantastic Tar Genji 100% becomes number one priority if he has blade available. Be yeah. on him when he's blading. Damage you when he's blading. Um, besides that, Hans would be the best. And then Genji would be okay to damage boost. Sigma would be okay to damage boost. Reinhardt would be okay to damage boost. Everyone else just becomes okay. So be I'd be on Hanzo most of the time. Genji while he's blading. Everybody else situationally, like who's shooting at people, basically. Mm -hmm. Right? Who needs it the most. But just notice we're doing a lot of tank pocketing, right? When that's not really our job to be doing. Okay. Um, I'm noticing that basically, like, every time we fly, ever use Guardian Angel, we always um, leap past them and add a space bar in. Um, mm -hmm. Note that that's not applicable to any and all situations, right? Yeah. So you're going to have situations where you're not going to want to leap past, such as if the enemy team is past your team, right? Like you're not going to want to leap into the enemy team, right. as well as just, for example, like if you're just trying to stop your flight, canceling your flight is going to be much faster than pressing the space bar. You're going to have less momentum. You're not going to fly forward. So if you're just trying to stop yourself from going forwards, it's more efficient to it depends on what your 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 setting is either you let go of the button if you have, if you have it on hold or if you have it on toggle then you would click the button again so you'd press shift shift right um if you want to cancel it and then canceling it will just immediately stop the flight right and then that means that you will just end up stopping right so don't make sure we're not just constantly pressing spacebar to go past right that's not going to be applicable in all situations because you can also just normally fly to the person as well. It's another thing. Alright. Alright, so ha we should be on Hanzo now. Not really on Hanzo. Okay. Um, notice how we're isolating ourselves from our team, ourselves from our team, right? Mm -hmm. Where we're just kind of on our own. Right, so here, there's two reasons why we die. Now, um, I don't want to go super in-depth on survivability because I don't think survivability is our main issue. Um, mm -hmm. But just real quick, deaths are bad. whoop de doo Look to stop deaths from happening. Um, the four main thing reasons why people die are poor positioning, a lack of awareness, mm -hmm. um, a misuse of abilities, such as like if we guardian angel in the middle of their team, right? Um, and then over aggression, such as think for example the one time where we like walked uh, that we were just talking about where we walked forwards too far, and then um, that could have maybe resulted in us dying, right? Um, so those are the four main reasons usually. Here in this situation, the two main reasons are one because we're isolating our, or I'd say yeah, one because we're isolating ourselves, right? We're we have no one to fly to, no one to get away, you know, get us away from Farah, right? No one to help us out. And then secondly is a lack of awareness. We didn't know Farah was on top was on top of us until she was on top of us, right? And then therefore we she gets that jump on us and we just don't have any time to react to get away. Whereas if we're paying attention much sooner we're able to react. So that gets into audio awareness. Keep your ears open, listen, right? It's the same thing as visual awareness and how you do it. Um, other things that go into audio awareness. 
turn up your master volume if needed, right? That just so you can hear more, turn down or off your music volume. A lot of times that just clutters with audio. Yeah. I would make sure that you have surround sound enabled on your headset. If it is not an option on your headset, turn it on in game. Dolby Atmos for headphones is that option. Um, and then even if you have all those settings terrible, you can still have good audio awareness if you pay attention to your surroundings, listening for footsteps, for gunshots, for forest flight, for abilities and ultimates, right? Paying attention, being aware allows us to not die, right? Yeah. So, so noting that so far, right, we have gone, let's take a let's just say let's take out two minutes for simplicity take out two minutes of gameplay for the in between rounds right mm -hmm. so we have five minutes five and a half minutes of gameplay have yet to use a res have yet to use an ultimate right mm -hmm. two major parts of our kit that we just flat up don't use right so it's as if you're playing the character and at like you know maybe I'd say like without those two things I'd say you're maybe playing Mercy at like sixty percent capacity right mm -hmm. you're missing out you like you're missing out on this humongous untapped potential of like forty percent of your kit at this point right just flat like even if you're using them like poorly and not like really fantastic I would say you'd be, get drastic changes if you just press the buttons. But, you know, hopefully you'll be, after the session, you'll be using them well, not just using them. <laughs> right? You're looking for both quantity and quality, not just one or the other. Right. And we didn't really do much in these rounds. It's pretty much just, like, I think a majority of it was, like, the far out just picking us off one by one. Mm. Mm. Get them that, off me. And notice how we're lagging really far behind their team. Um, new number one becomes McCree right, over the Hanzo. Again, haven't really been on our on our target priorities. We also want to be paying attention to Genji because nano damage or, or sorry, damage blade is gonna be very good. Um, are you familiar with what damage boost does when you damage boost a blade? Does it change any of the any like the time to kill or any of the um, more damage things yeah so do you know specifically like what yeah. is the difference between the two yeah right well i'm asking as a question so yeah oh, yeah you okay. know <laughs> uh what was the question sorry yeah so the question is do you know specifically like what is the damage because i'll just give you a hint it has to do with his ability and ultimate usage right, right. what's the difference between damage boosting him and not damage boosting him uh less damage means like more time to kill them yeah, so specifically, just to give you the specifics, yeah. right? Um, when you damage boost him, he is able to do a... Or I guess without damage boost, he has to two slash, right? He has to go mm -hmm. slash, wait again, slash again. Even if he dashed, right. wouldn't make a difference. He still mm -hmm. has to do two slashes. Right. If you damage boost him, now he can kill squishy targets, anything that's not a tank, with mm -hmm. a slash dash, right? So or a dash slash, right? Alternatively, right. right? So now with a damage boost, he's able to basically cut the time in half, essentially, right? Mm -hmm. Because he can do those instantaneously. So cutting the time in half is really important. Same thing happens when you do a nano boost on him. And if you do a nano boost with a damage boost by Mercy, he does a one slash, right? He doesn't even need the dash, which makes it ten times easier for him to blade, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas here, just again, notice how far away from our team we are, right? Yeah. So make sure we're staying up with them. So that's that's positioning, right? We're on the Ana right now. Take the, just, you know, go stand. We don't have to wait for him to peek the edge. Just go stand on the escalator. Yep, there you go. <laughs> right, just very delayed on that. And then because we're so delayed on that, basically our delay on that is what gets him killed there, right? Yeah. Probably very easily preventable if we just, you know, go and stand on the platform sooner. Mm -hmm. um, again, noting that we didn't use our ultimate that fight. Um, one, two, three, four. Uh, yeah, deep, pretty good res. You know, I, I wouldn't. We used cover on it. Um, mm, let's see. Why did we die there? Uh, I think it's far again. Yeah. Coming hot. There she is. Um. Yeah. Flying away, right, is an option. Use, mm -hmm. use. You can use flight for mobility. You can also use it to dodge, right? Mm -hmm. To the, you know, for example, like let's say we flew over to Ana. We just like you know we res. We look over at Ana, right? Um, we can also 
Um, I would imagine you're unfamiliar with super jumping. Would you like to review how to do that? I think it was when you guardian angel and then you press space like last last second. Mm, no, that's just that's jumping past them, right? Oh, okay. Is what that would do. Uh, are you from? Are you are you familiar with what super jumping is? Is it like where the concept is? I heard of it. I don't know what it is. Though. All right, let's go over that then, because that that's right. you know it's a, it really and probably one of the most handy texts in the game to understand, right? So, um, just to go over all that, you have basically four main types of flight, right? You have your normal, I'm going to fly to the person, pressing the button once or, or holding it down, right? Depending on your mm -hmm. setting, right? Flying to the person normally, right? You have flying to the person and pressing space bar, which cancels and launches you past them. This gets you momentum. This is particularly handy when you're trying to cross avoid, like, you know, such as if we're trying to fly to this person and then get to this cover, right? Um, right. Whereas if we tried to do this, we just end up halfway in the middle, right? Um, but it's not going to be good if we do this and go into the middle of their team, right? Um, which we do this pretty much every time we ever fly, which is not going to be applicable. You can also cancel your flight as well. This is done by letting go or pressing the button again. So such as if we're trying to end up getting to that cover, um, we can fly to this person and cancel, right? All right. right. Whereas, alternatively, if we were to try to do that and press the space bar, well, now we have some momentum that's going to mess with us, right? Mm -hmm. um, super jumping... Right, it looks like this. Right, so how to do that is you are going to uh, assuming. Do you have your controls on shift? Just confirming you have yeah. your controls on shift and uh, crouch for yep. control. Right, shift for flying, crouch for control. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your pinky and you're going to press it on both of the buttons at the exact same time. You're going to notice that when you do this, you actually fly really low to the ground, and then mm -hmm. at the very end, you're going to pop up in the air, right? So you see that little pop? Here we go, yeah. low, up, right? So mm -hmm. once you get to the very top of that up is when you're going to press space bar. So low, oh, I, up, oh, nice. I just pop. That. I'm in yeah. the practice range right now, and I just yep. did that. Nice. Yeah, so, that. you know. Practice a little bit, get good at it. Um, then you'll, you know, practice in the training range. Then go and practice it in games and stuff like that. All right? Just any any time, like you know, let, let's just say you're waiting for the round to start. Practice it. Right? That way, you it's a tool in your arsenal. You can use this to get to high grounds very easily. We've seen a couple times where we've just kind of been running around, like going, "Peek me, please!" Right? Where we can just very easily right. do this and get up to them. Right? You can use this as an escape mechanism. Like so, far as on top of us fly up in the air and now now we're harder for far to kill right mm -hmm. um then if we're just slowly walking away right so multiple options for that gives you visibility as well as another option right so maybe we want to be able to res somebody on high ground or you know maybe we want to be able to i don't know like we're, we're trying to do a little bit of a skip right we're trying to res somebody over there and we're right here enemy teams right there that sort of idea right so right. so far Zero ultimates used, one res used. Value, very little. <laughs> All right, let's see. Um, we're running out of time here. I'm going to real quick just see, do we ult yeah. here? Do or It looks like we use it like here. Let's see, how, how do we use it? All right, so we use it. Fight's beginning. Uh, maybe like I would have used it like f four seconds sooner. Besides that... Mm -hmm. you know pretty good timing just do it more often right um good i like the damage boost i like the healing uh oh um look to fly out of that sooner don't be afraid to use guardian angel to fly in sooner instead of just floating around overall not too shabby it wasn't used terribly not not any big problems with it let's see do we use it again at all um, looks like round might end before we do, question mark. Oh, no, we use it. How do we use it? Alright, so... Let's talk about it. Yeah, we get get to this. Alright, so, um, we're running out of time here, um, because mm -hmm. uh, we're going to use this last little bit of time to discuss the main points of the session, do a quick review and wrap it up, but we sure. have a very important concept to discuss before we get to that. So, right. and that is... How to tell whether or not you have won or lost the fight, right? How do you tell that? Mainly, this comes down to watching kill feed, right? The top right corner of your screen, mm -hmm. who's up or down people. When you are up or down one to two people, that is an advantage or a disadvantage, right? That's the point where you can play a little bit more aggressive or a little bit more passive, right? But you haven't won or lost yet. 
mm-hmm. you are up or down two to three people, right? That would be this situation right now. This situation, it is currently a one, two, three, four versus a one, two. Right. So, right. or sorry, never mind. I missed that. That's a diva bomb. So that's, oh no, no, sorry. It is four people. Yep. So it's a four V two. So in this case, it is currently a lost fight, right? Because it's a four V two. So in a one or lost fight, in a one fight, you play super aggressive, go in, don't use ultimates in a one or lost fight, right? Right now it's a lost fight. So we should not be valking in a lost fight. You look to get out or let them kill you, like we discussed before. So ultimately, right here, if we're paying attention to kill feed, and we see our teams all dying, then Valking probably isn't a good idea when we could just wait 30 seconds for the next fight to begin. Right? That's plenty of time to re- go in and recontest a point. Um, now we do get the res of question mark, but in that time, McCree dies, so we're still, you know, we still die. All right, so as you see, Valk didn't really do anything there. All right, so let's go over main points, do a quick review. So, um, ability usage, we just discussed all the different types of Guardian Angels. Um, I'd say like maybe some situations we didn't use it as often as we could. It's an ability that comes back to you. What's a cooldown? Uh, cooldown is two seconds, right? You're going to be getting this thing all the time. Um, as long as you're not flying into their team, don't be afraid to use it. Use it a little bit more often. Um, using the situ- in those situ- ways we said to use it, right? Um, res... Res much more often. I, I saw res once. Um, it was like a decent res, right? But pay attention to all... Like, first off, press the button much more often. Pay attention to deaths, right? The first... I, I don't think we discussed this, but just watch for dead bodies, right? You can't go for reses if you don't know people are actually dead in the first place. So watch kill feed. When you see your teammates die in kill feed, look around for their body. Once you find the body, you eyeball the body, right? You see... Can I res it? Right, that's what we discussed before. Do I have cover? Do I have Valk? Do I have team support? Are they paying attention? Are they looking at me? Right? Would I be able to get away? Am I far enough away? If their entire team's all over there and they don't have range, I could res right here. Right? Um, so pay attention to all those different things. Eyeball it. Um, overall ability usage probably. Oh, <sighs> I'm trying to think. Um, do do do. Do I put this at a me for the moment? I'm going to put it at a medium. I might bump it up to a medium high priority for you to work on. But mm-hmm. for now, we're putting it at a medium priority, right? All right. Ultimate usage. Um, we saw, I, at least from my saw, um, we used it like just as much as we did our uh, ult or res usage, right? Um, so pretty much the same thing, right? Like it's just use it much more often. Once we did use our ultimate, I actually think the usage is fine, right? So again, probably a medium. Might bump it up to medium high. Let me get through the rest before I do that. Um, just make sure you're using it more often is the big thing with the, your ultimate usage, right? Mm-hmm. Um, besides that, Mercy doesn't really have mechanics, but this category is replaced by beam usage. So how are we using our beams? Um, here, that's going to mean don't overheal. Pay attention to you know people and when they're low, when they're not. Um, besides that, make sure we're paying attention to target Tar- pocket targets right and default targets like who should we be on most of the time who should we be on when that sort of idea be on your dps pick out the best people to be pocketing and the situations which you should pocket pocket them like you know maybe you should go in pocket you know damage juice roadhog when he lands a hook right or maybe you should damage juice the genji while he's blading right so situational but then also just who's the best for the round right um overall that one's probably not as big as the other ones um, I guess let, let's put the other, we'll just put the, uh, I'm trying to think here. Um, we're going to put that one at medium and we're going to bump up the ability and the ultimate usage to medium highs, right? That's what we're going to do. So that one's a medium, other two are medium highs, right? Moving on, let's see. Um, uh, next, probably going to do the positioning. Positioning, make sure we're positioning ourselves in the middle of all of our teammates, right? So don't be standing on the outskirts of the fight. Position in between them so you can heal them. But don't stand, like, in front of the fight. You want to put, like, a little bit of a distance between you and the enemy team, right? So you do have 15 meters on your range, on your beam range, right? You can heal from pretty far away, right? So make sure, like, you're putting yourself far away from them, the enemy team, not, like, in front of your teammates. Stay behind them. Um, and then as well, this gives you visibility on them. If you're right here, you can't see your team. If you're right here, you can, right? Um, then besides that, take high grounds. Um, and then, uh, I don't know. I think that's about it. Honestly, that, that one probably goes to, like, a medium as well, right? 
Then moving on, you have awareness. Awareness is pay attention to your um, pay attention to your abilities and your ultimates. Make sure you know you were paying, looking at them, and when we look at them, it's we we might be reminded to use them. Really important. Pay attention to kill feed, right? When pe when you're up or down people, right? We just discussed the whole kill feed watching thing, right? Pay attention to that. Also pay attention to, so you can look to res people when they die, right? Pay attention to your teammates. Where are my teammates at? Watch their health bars. When do they need healing? When do they not? When should I go to damage boost, right? When they're full HP, swap the damage, and then look for somebody else to heal, right? Um, pay attention to like, you know, who's critical, who's in danger. There are a lot of times where we're like, we saw people who are low and we just didn't heal them, right? Um, pay attention to where's the enemy team at. So far it doesn't end up jumping on top of us. Pay attention to your audio awareness, right? Keeping our ears open. Overall, awareness probably goes to like a medium high as well. So the top three, so let's just put that in order real quick. Probably say number one is awareness, right? Of paying attention to your environment. Number two is going to be your your uh, ability usage, because um, I think there's more to work on. Three is your ultimate usage. Four is going to be your positioning, and then five is your um, mechan or your beam usage, right? Any mm -hmm. questions about anything that we've talked about or anything else in general? Um, not really. You pretty much hit it on the head. All right, so then let me stop the recording there.